What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Arizona Cardinals Madden 19 Rebuild Franchise. We are set to begin the 2027 season today. We're coming off an offseason where we made some moves that I really liked. Adding wide receiver Bradley Young was what appeared to be the most popular decision down below in the comments. He was a star caliber receiver here in terms of development. And the acquisition of Young and the acquisition of our first selection, Marquise Walters, has made you all, seemingly all of you, want to trade Isaac White, who spent his entire career here as a great receiver. You just want to get rid of a receiver who has been so good for us for such a long time, who has been our number one receiver for nearly the duration of the series, not quite the whole thing. He's been a good player, really good player, although regression absolutely destroyed his ratings last season. This is what happened when we went to the offseason. All these ratings just free-falling. Loss of 38 points in total, which probably lost about three overall points or so, but it's not good news. So, I'll consider trading Isaac White, of course. We have a good offensive line, though. Lucas McAllister has been really good outplaying his ratings, I believe, since we've got him. We have a pretty good set of running backs. I like our quarterback, of course, in J.W. Unger, who's about to begin his third season in the NFL, and he is already on the path to stardom, it seems. The defense has to get a lot better this season. I was able to draft LaMarcus Russell in the draft, and we're going to need him to step up. He has the speed, he has the cover ability, and I'm looking at LaMarcus Russell to hopefully be a starting middle linebacker. This number 90, though, is not going to work for me. We're going to change the number for Roy Marpet, give him 63, and we're going to give his 51 to the new middle linebacker. And LaMarcus Russell is from Indiana State. Who here can name Indiana State's mascot? Because I know I can't. The Indiana State Sycamores. All right. Their bowl record is 0-1. All right. They're in the FCS. Their playoff record all time is 2-3. So LaMarcus Russell might be the best player to come out of Indiana State. Actually, that would be a stretch. There were a few players who had some notable careers in the 80s, including Vincey Glenn, who had 35 career interceptions. I've never heard of him, but he had a good career, it looks like, and played for the Vikings in the 90s. Let's see if we can get a helmet for him that you guys in the comments will actually like. I'm not a big accessory guy. I don't know, you know what certain players wear or what looks good but I just uh, I throw together some accessories and I say good enough so there you go LaMarcus Russell is accessorized now I've been hearing about this helmet situation with JW Unger since he was drafted as much as I love seeing this comment all the time I think it's going to be uh, a chance for me to get this right how about we go random how about we go random here with JW Unger Looks like we're going with this one. That looks like something you'll like. Or was it the same one? We're gonna go with this today, and maybe that's a slight improvement. We'll give Bradley Young the Jacory Day full sleeve on one side. How about that? We are going to need a better quarterback too behind JW Unger, so let's see what we got here. I'll sort by medium accuracy, actually. And it looks like Chris Schmidt has good ratings overall. Not bad for Dustin Morrow, but Schmidt might be the better player. Plus, he has the only four years of experience. So I think Chris Schmidt is who I want to sign. He's out of Ohio State. The Ohio State. Not to be confused with, I don't know, another Ohio State or the Ohio Bobcats. Let's sign him, though. Wow, Avery Payne went from being a highly sought-after free agent to all of a sudden now he's available in the preseason for a low deal. Unfortunately, we have Dre Riddle. I want to get him some more carries, so we're not going to sign Avery Payne. Being a running back is not exactly a great job in the NFL anymore, unless you're in the top five, six guys. We're going to sign an interesting receiver here, Curtis Marsh from Idaho State, the same school that produced Jared Allen, Viking legend. Curtis Marsh has good short route running. Medium and deep are okay to start out. A lot of these ratings are all right for a possession receiver. That release is a little concerning though. 
I don't know if I'll actually trade him, but I am going to add him to the trade block to see what offers we may get. I wonder if the overalls of our receivers are going to hurt us this season. Obviously, in the simulations, it's kind of a different world sometimes, but I don't know how it's going to treat this situation with our best receivers being 78s. It might hurt. We'll see. JW Unger might be enough to like help these guys still get a lot of production. I think they're good receivers, though, especially Caldwell. So I definitely want to get a lot of production out of wide receiver Bradley Young, who's already on here. Perfect. I'm cool there with Jarvis Salisbury. Let's get him developing as we need a good edge rusher opposite of Joey Bosa. And for the third spot, I think I'll go Watts Mathis. I want to get his ratings up as fast as possible. And with over 8,000 XP, I assume he's close to an upgrade. I think it's time to put Jalen Smith lower on the depth chart once again. Obviously, his regression from this last offseason was not very good. LaMarcus Russell's getting his chance. And I'm probably going to look to trade Parker Wood while we're at it here. Deontay Wallace starts at right outside linebacker. For the corner spot, I want to get Watts Mathis into a more premier position here. He'll play outside with Aaron Howell. And then at safety, I still want to stick with Corey Holiday. So I think if White is to still be productive, he still has good speed. And his short route running is 82. I know he has 84 deep route running, but I think that with the short route running here, he will be a good fit in the slot, especially when we're watching. He's a better fit than anybody else. So for the time being, White's going to move inside, hopefully, to extend his career while we play the other speedy receivers, the real speedy receivers, on the outside. Martavis Caldwell is going to be the number one guy. And then we're going to give Bradley Young the shot here. He's got the really good development. We also have Marquise Walters, who was our first pick. We'll see how much he actually ends up playing as he's already kind of being put down the depth chart a little bit. What does concern me, though, is the catch ratings on all these guys. Nobody's even in the 80s yet. Thankfully, Lucas McAllister is sure-handed. Got to make sure Bradley Sneed is the number two tight end so he can do some blocking. Denard Huval was a good fit here for nickel corner anyway. Jarvis Salisbury is actually our second highest rated rush defensive tackle. He's going to start at end. I'll have him be the third defensive tackle right now because he already should play a lot as a rush end. But that gives us another option for just inside rushers and if we suffer an injury there I think we're actually equipped to deal with it this season first preseason game was no problem 35-14 dominant victory for our cards two touchdowns for J-Dub two for Chris Schmidt not bad numbers here coming off the bench I'm really happy with that Jason Lemon ran for a touchdown Dre Riddle four yards a carry Avery Payne is a Baltimore Raven and Marquise Walters Two touchdowns in his preseason debut and a long at 23. Caldwell had 45 yards, Isaac White 35. Touchdowns here for the two tight ends we enjoy watching so much. And on the defensive side here, Deontay Wallace leads us in tackles. He led the team last season. We actually had four sacks. Love seeing that. And no interceptions, catches allowed. Who allowed the most? Looks like Wallace. I still have Lester Phelps there in the background. I've got to take some new in-game snapshots. I like that feature. It's a minor thing. It's kind of cool, but I've got to update it. Well, we have some trade offers here. Denard Huval and Isaac White. So let's review these. For Denard Huval, current starting nickel corner. I think these offers are mostly fair. A 2 and a 5 is a nice deal. Um, this is something I'll consider if the year doesn't go as planned. Obviously, we need Huval right now, but if it's not a good season, then we'll look to trade and acquire some selections. For Isaac White, I'd expect about the same. Yeah, mid-round stuff, maybe no twos, but there's a market for both if we want to trade him. I think that said Isaac had 584 receptions. Not our best performance here against Philadelphia. Not a ton of offense in this game either. We did have an interception from Chris Schmidt, who did not have as good of a game as he did the first time around. J-Dub had a touchdown. Jason Lemon, 4.2. Dre Riddle, 3.3. 3. 
I want to see JT King get a little work too, so I might adjust the depth chart for one of these games. Caldwell, 36. Not a ton here. More sacks. We seem to do really well in the preseason now in that department. Isaac White is hoping for a trade. He wants a more prominent role than he has in Arizona. Come on, starting slot receiver. You saw Larry Fitzgerald do that to extend his career. Slot receiver is not a backup position. See, that's where I think Madden needs a good morale system. And if you put a player on the trade block, he should not have good morale. Either his morale was already bad and you want to trade him, or you're deciding to trade him and therefore making him unhappy in the process. So we lose here against the Packers in a more offensive game. We had a touchdown for J-Dub and an interception, 21 of 26. On the ground, Jason Lemon, 98 yards. Bradley Young goes for 6 and 50. Caldwell had 82 yards. A touchdown for Bradley Sneed. And how about that defense? 12 tackles, Deontay Wallace. I think he'll lead the team again should he stay healthy. We're not getting interceptions, sadly. Holiday allowed six catches. That's pretty bad for his safety. That's a lot. The Cardinals go 1-3 and three in the preseason. Chris Schmidt had a tough day. Only 43% completion, 5 yards an attempt. Not impressed by those numbers. J-Dub, 4 of 8 with an interception. Trey Tutton, wow. Good day against our run defense. JT King did get more play time, but didn't do a whole lot with the carries. Wendell Branch looks like he is now a Dallas Cowboy. We had Sneed for 46 yards. Walters had two touchdowns. That was our first selection this past year. And then Donaldson had a sack. So did Eric Walters. Two interceptions for Lerone Bird. One for Antrell Massey. One for Jalen Smith. Preseason's over, everybody. Bradley Sneed has earned an upgrade, and we're still going to focus on blocking with him. Come on, let's get a good run blocking boost. Didn't really get it. Bradley Young earned his first upgrade during the preseason. We will go deep threat with him, and I hope we are prepared to stretch the field because we are equipped to do it. He just got faster. Don't tell me he just got faster. Wasn't it already 96? Maybe it was 95, but whatever, he got faster. Oh, this is good. Deontay Wallace is getting an upgrade. He has 79 speed, 79 zone coverage. I would like to go past coverage with him. 76 overall. Wallace, plus two man, plus two zone. Let's go. And finally, Gilbert Vaughn, defensive tackle. You know what? Let's go make him a scheme fit here. 80 overall, run stopper archetype. He got the boost at block shedding. We're going to keep Wes Walrus on the practice squad and cut our one of our last selections, Frank Prather. No surprise cuts or anything, but here are the preseason numbers. Both quarterbacks had four touchdowns and two interceptions, but J.W. Unger was far more effective in about every other category. Jason Lemon had 5.1 yards per carry, and if the passing game takes a step back this season, which on paper it should, with the loss of Devontae Adams and the regression of Isaac White, it needs to be a big year for Jason Lemon, both on the ground and in the air. Marquise Walters, he did lead us in receiving yards and touchdowns and receptions during the preseason, so we can't forget about him just because Bradley Young has the better development. Deontay Wallace led the team in tackles with 25. We had a fair amount of sacks led by Marshall Donaldson's two and a half and a few interceptions there in that final preseason game. So with that, everybody, we're on to the regular season. And I'm sorry, but we're matched up against Seattle again. It's not my fault. I always watch week one. And it's going to be no different this time. A 10.15 p.m. away game. If that's local time, good luck watching that on the East Coast. All right. Seattle knocked us out of the postseason last year. And it was really disappointing after going 13-3 and and routing Seattle in Week 17. Let's take a look at the Seahawks roster now. Ross Han, Jarrell Leach, Russell Wilson... Any new players we have to know about? Jazario Foster, Marion DeGraffenreid at wide receiver, and Pierce Molden, a 74 overall corner. 
Because the preseason intro stuff takes a little bit of time, next episode I'll do this. I'll go through all the teams and show you the best player everybody has. And I'll take a look at the overalls, maybe adjust some of the XP sliders. It's been a tough year, though, for the XP sliders. I've used, like, recommended stuff, and clearly that wasn't working, so I've had to make some adjustments as I've continued on. I'm not really that worried about it. It's just if I can make it better, it'll only improve the series. So, we're going to get to week one, though. Matched up against Seattle again. Chris Schmidt earned an upgrade, and from his stats, I'd say he needs it. I was impressed with the first game, not impressed with the next three. So, field general upgrade for you, Chris. Can you be the adequate QB2 for this team? I don't know. Man, the outside of this stadium in Madden 19 does look awesome. That's one of my favorite things, I think, about the addition of the Frostbite engine. I don't think that... It's really brought upon many positives in the gameplay front. The Frostbite engine, though, good-looking graphics. You will get that. Jason Lemon, our primetime player. We need him to have a big season. I signed him to the five-year deal because I think his best football is still ahead of him. He hasn't always had the great uh, situation with our team, but I think that with our offensive line getting better and now solidified... We're going to have a good time with our young running back, who is still young, even though he's through his rookie contract. So here we go, everybody. We are underway in Seattle, looking to avenge last year's playoff defeat. Seattle from their 25. They'll start in the air with Wilson. He's got time, fires to his right, and completes the pass for about seven. That was complete to Charles Duff, who also has the gold captain's patch. Second down for Wilson. He's wide open again. Here's a handoff to the outside. Oh, Bosa. I thought he'd make that play. It is another first down. They'll hand it again. That's what we want to see right there. Good run defense as Iwabima leads the way. I don't think we're that far from seeing Howard Iwabima actually be the best player on our defensive line. Wasn't expecting that. A big gash in the secondary. That goes for a first down. Seattle cruising down the field. And now they're breaking out my formation from the Minnesota Dynasty. Hand off. There we go, Bosa. Wilson fakes on second down. He's still rolling, now floats this and found his man who turns it up inside the five. No! Iwabima. No. Oh, man. Please don't be serious. From the eye, Russell Wilson. Goal to go! Sacked by Gilbert Vaughn! Well, if Iwabima is down for any significant length of time, it's Gilbert Vaughn who needs to step up in the first place, so we might as well right now. Second down and goal for Seattle. They're going to run it once again. Oh, my. 43 just got ran over. Who is 43? I'm not even sure. I gave a player a number in the 40s. So, Colmer's going to motion out on third and goal. And following up there is LaMarcus Russell. As Wilson finds his man for the touchdown. Seattle strikes first with relative ease. Number 43 is Lerone Bird, who is listed as the third string strong safety. I'm not sure what got him on the field. So that drive didn't look good at all for us, but it's our offense that needs to be the strength of this team anyway. First down for J.W. Unger, starting the third season of his NFL career by handing to Jason Lemon, who will plow ahead for a gain of nine. Let's see Jason Lemon continue to set new career highs. Hunger to the air. Floats outside and it's intercepted. The first throw of his season is taken away. That was intended for Bradley Young. Trying to float it up the sideline. He did not get enough underneath it. This is not looking good, everybody. Buda Baker knocks away a pass. And Amari Colmer, their running back. A catch for 26 yards. Then he loses three, gets four back, and incomplete. 
So early on, 10-0 for Seattle. Why don't we watch another possession then and see if we can do at least a little bit better. Here's a fake from J.W. Unger. Already one interception under his belt as he completes. No, he does not. Ripped out of the hands of Caldwell. Oh, I should mention I'm also on the newest patch now. Not on purpose. I had my PlayStation in rest mode and it must have automatically downloaded the patch even though I don't have automatic download set and it was already paused. So, couldn't tell you why it downloaded for me, but it did. But I've heard... You know, mostly good things about this patch, that it either didn't mess anything up or it has, you know, been good. So we'll see. Third down and 12 for J-Dub. He's floating again. Found his man, Lemon. Oh, man, that effort from Jason Lemon is not going to be enough for a first. That's sickening. Please do better, Arizona. He got a sack. I don't know who did it because I skipped too quickly. But third and 18. Come on. Guys, this is already feeling like it's going to be a long season. I just have a bad vibe about this. Six to Lemon, two to Lemon. Give it to him again. Give Jason the football. First down White inside of Seattle Territory. Here we go. May have a drive here, folks. 12 yards for Caldwell. Come on, man. That's already two. Jarvis Salisbury got a sack. There we go. I want to see him have a big rookie season. And I want to see J.W. Unger not play like trash. Is Unger rattled by this Seattle defense after his two red zone interceptions last season? He's already thrown two interceptions today. Maybe his confidence is shaken as Lemon is dropped. Third and 13, we go empty now with all this speed. Almost picked again. Unger, what are you doing? This isn't going to cut it. Man, the defense stepped up too for a little while. Bought us a little time to get the offense going. And now it's 20-0. to zero. This team is really, really frustrating right now. Do better, Arizona. Please, get points before halftime, even if it's three. We have two receivers, no make it three on the field. Unger goes short to McAllister, and that was a waste of a play. Is this the part where the owner is supposed to like leave the game early? Because this feels like a very acceptable moment to do that. Unger on second down. He's going deep with it, and got him! It's a touchdown, Martavis Caldwell! 51-yard touchdown. Eventually, one of these speedy guys is going to get open. It's only a matter of time. But please tell me I don't got to wait for someone to get wide open for us to do anything correctly. All right, Unger. Will that get you back on track? So if you didn't notice, I did start the Anton Greenberry Road to Glory at last. And I put together a lengthy intro recapping... To the best of my abilities, his NFL career, as this is complete to Bradley Sneed. And going through that, going through all the uh, episodes like I did to get those clips, man, it made me so nostalgic about that series. It made me want to go just so far into this one. We have a chance, I think, to go further than the Browns rebuild. Although, we're moving at a much slower pace in this series. Like, the Browns rebuild wasn't even 80 episodes, and it went 18 years. We're, like, halfway there, and we're at episode 66. But I think by the time Madden 20 comes out, we can definitely go a long ways. Here's Unger with a strike to McAllister. Love it. At some point, though, we'll probably speed up the pace. The reason why the pace sped up in the Browns series was because we won back-to-back -back Super Bowls, taking our time was no longer necess a necessity. In this series, as Lemon breaks loose, let's go. We won a Super Bowl that I would call a complete fluke. Going 9-7, and seven, getting bailed out by bad AI in the Super Bowl. To me, it feels like we haven't even won. And we've had a lot less success in this series than with the Browns. The Perry Cummings era changed everything. We haven't had that happen in this series. Here's a handoff again for Jason Lemon. He is running well. So... 
We'll see. There might be an event at some point. Like, the more success we have, the faster things are going to move. And sometimes when we're really bad, things are going to move really quickly. But we spend a lot of time in the middle. And that's where I, I guess I spend a lot of time watching games. But I don't think I'll watch as many games this season. I think I watched six or seven last year. That's a lot. So this season we'll get back to uh, probably a more quick pace. But... I always just play it by ear and see how the season unfolds and what I think the next watchable game is. First and ten, swing left, lemon, nope. Oh, come on. Martavis Caldwell is now injured. Please don't mess this up. Second and thirteen, caught, spinning his way is Hamilton. Do you think Unger's having flashbacks to last year's postseason with two end zone interceptions? Let's hope he can right the wrongs. Unger! It's a touchdown! Bradley Young! In the back of the end zone, the rookie makes his first career touchdown reception. We're back in this game. This is good. Down by six now. We'll get into a defensive possession once again, but it won't be right here. I'll send a drive to the offense now. That's not good. Unger goes down, hits McAllister for 10, and we'll be punting. So Caldwell is out for game, but Iwabima tore his shoulder. And that, I'm going to guess that's going to be a three to four week injury. If my knowledge about Madden injuries is truly good. I am no medical expert, but if I know anything, it's usually how long injuries will be in a game of Madden. We'll see. It might even be a one to two week injury. For some reason, the shoulders in the Madden universe, they heal magically. Good stop. Like, I'm pretty sure I've seen torn labrums heal in Madden in like a week. Or maybe it's just shoulder tears. Not torn labrums. Third and inches! Oh, please tell me you stopped him. That was a beastly tackle. And we did! I need to know who to reward. It's Eric Walters. A.K.A. The only player I signed during unrestricted free agency. The only one. He just busted out the spin move on him. That was pretty nice. I enjoyed watching that. And now we're going to sim. We're going to get us to the fourth quarter. Eight yards from Lemon. As the Cardinals are mounting a comeback. 14 unanswered. But sadly... Oh, that wasn't third down? That was. I would not throw it to our blocking tight end on third and 13. Not even sure why he was on the field. Why would we go two tight ends on third and 13? This is a Jeff Fisher offense. Oh, Holiday! Come on, man. We're going to watch... So my hope is that you're seeing a lot more content overall come to the channel. Obviously, I just kicked off the Greenberry Road to Glory deal. And I'm going to have MLB The Show coming as well. Here's Wilson on first down. He's going over the middle, and it's broken up by Corey Holiday. And I want to bring some of the show to the channel. Not like a long 12-month series. I want to do something small in the March to October mode. But overall, if I'm going to get all this done, I need more two upload days. And that's why today is going to be one of those days. Not sure if I already uploaded baseball today, but there will be baseball on the channel here today. Tuesday, March 26th. My overall goal is to get you guys a lot of multiple upload days on this channel. And I know I haven't always done that. And I've talked about wanting that in the past. Why was the coverage so bad right there? Well, we're going to find out here. Okay, everyone cheats inside. How will I think you messed that up? That was horrible. What was play call? What was play? Oh, cover four palms. I don't know that coverage all that well. But I don't think leaving the boundary open is in the description of that coverage. Here's a fake from Wilson. He'll go across the middle. It's caught inside the five. See, the Seahawks, they pass the ball pretty well for a team that doesn't have any 80 overall wide receivers. They have a good quarterback. I'm hoping we can take on that model. Here's Wilson. First down. Touchdown, Seattle. I'm pretty sure that 88 there has like nine catches. 
We should cover him. That hurts, too, because now it's a 14-point game in the fourth quarter. And this comeback is proving to be uh, a challenge. 22 yards, though, to Isaac White. Let's go. Do it correctly here. Unger is going to go outside with it. Nice catch. Wow. Was that Hamilton? That was really good. Second down. Unger has it knocked away by whomever took Bobby Wagner's number. San Francisco lost their season opener. That stinks. Uh-oh. Downfield with it. Knocked away. He picked it. Off his own deflection. Logan with the INT. That's two interceptions now targeting rookie Bradley Young. J-Dub, what's going on here? We had single-digit picks last year, I'm pretty sure. And now three in week one. And potential for a fourth, I'd say. As Seattle gets a first down, Gilbert Vaughn commits a foul, and it looks like they can run out majority of this remaining clock, if not all of it. This was not what I hoped to see in week one, but I can't say that it wasn't at all surprising. We struggled against them in the playoffs, and obviously I expected maybe some regression within the offense. Just wasn't hoping it would hit this heavily this soon. J.W. Unger. I think that now, after the postseason, the way he played in that game and this one, definitely some uneasy feelings. Hopefully it's just this one team that has his number, and there's just something about them that we struggle to compete against, because this is not what we need here with J-Dub's third season. Russell Wilson had a really good day. We didn't do enough to slow him down. Almost a perfect stat line for him. Unger had some good moments but man he trusted his arm in situations he just shouldn't have Ravon Gilbert for 10 catches I'm shocked that Patterson was as quiet as he was he's usually the one that gives us issues Watts Mathis had nine tackles like we had three DBs with nine tackles that's disgusting Gilbert Vaughn had a sack so did Salisbury Upgrade time. Watts Mathis will become an 80, most likely. We've got to work on that zone. It's our scheme. Mathis wasn't the best fit, but he was very talented when we took him, and I love that plus four awareness boost. It's an unreliable, upgradable trait, and to get that was pretty nice. Martavis called well. I know he has good deep route running, good medium. I think I'd like to go... Oh, man. Let's go with one more deep threat upgrade at least. 80 isn't, like, super high. Plus two catching. I'll take that. A little spin move action, too. And then our fifth corner, Jason Octavian. He will get a zone upgrade. We're pretty deep at corner, at least. Plus three zone coverage. So next episode, we're going to watch a different game. Maybe the Steeler game, the Bengal game. Let me know what game you want to see. I know it's not going to be San Francisco. I can't imagine you want to see more division action after the last three games that we've watched. Didn't go our way, but the Seahawks were the only team to win this week in the NFC West. Why don't we check on that injury report then? It's going to be Howard Iwabima out for four weeks. I nailed it. The shoulder will need four weeks to heal which means Gilbert Vaughn, which means that Salisbury. Eric Walters could also play some defensive tackle here. He's a power rusher with pretty good speed. Not going to be a dominant run stopper, but you wouldn't be able to tell by the, the play we saw him make. So I'll adjust the depth chart right there. Eric Walters is going to start next episode, and at rush defensive tackle, I should probably get him there as well. I don't mind if Salisbury rushes either. I'd kind of like to see that. We could rush Donaldson on the edge, then in our sub package. We'll see. So that's it for the first episode of 2027, everybody. Hopefully the next episode goes a little bit better for us. Otherwise, it'll be a step back after a big step forward. Thank you all for watching. Please smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. And as always, I love seeing your feedback down below in the comments. So let me know what you think of the team right now, and I'll see you again soon with more cards. Have a great day.